Hi, I'm Devin, the creator and designer behind Aurora Lee Designs. This is a video tutorial for my DIY kit for both the full size shopper bag and the mini crossbody style shopper bag. So the pattern pieces on both are almost entirely identical and the process is very similar. There are just going to be a few minor details, which I'll point out in the tutorial. So the first step in creating the shopper bag is we are going to be painting all of the edges that are going to remain as single layers of leather. So specifically the edges that we are going to paint are the tops of this um, main rectangular pattern piece, the very top edge of both of these, as well as the very bottom edge as we are going to overlap them like so, so they will remain single edges. So we're gonna paint both edges on this piece. Um, on this piece, we are going to do the same. We are going to, so these are gonna form the sides of the bag. So we are going to paint the top edges of these and we are going to paint just the portion of the bottom of the bag that is going to overlap. So that's from the pointed edge around the bottom to the other pointed edge on both of these. And then for these four pieces, which are going to form the handle covers on the bags once we sew them down, these you are going to paint around all of the edges of all four of them. And finally, these we are not going to be painting these yet. We'll be painting them in a later step. As a note, I've also included in each of the DIY kits a piece of scrap leather. So if you wanna practice this painting process on a piece of scrap leather, before you move on to painting the actual piece, you can do so. So you're going to take your edge paint container and this uh, edge paint applicator. And I'll just start with these to demo these. Um, so you're going to want to work with only a thin layer of paint at a time and a small amount of paint on your applicator, which will just help it be a lot easier to control. And you'll note that I've already pre-coated these with a layer of clear base coat and I did that so hopefully it'll be a lot easier for you to get a nice clean application of edge paint onto the piece. So I'm just working with a small layer of paint at a time and just go as slowly as you need to so that you can get a really controlled application. And we're going to be doing multiple rounds of painting, at least two, so it's you don't have to get it, you know, really thick in the in the beginning. And you just want to make sure that you're trying to stay as close to the edge as possible. And then once you finish painting a piece, um, you will set it aside to dry and you want to make sure that when it's drying um, none of the wet edges are touching anything. So for little pieces like these I like to rest them on like a small bottle or a spice shaker or something like that. And if you accidentally get a little bit of paint on the exterior of the leather, like if you were to just accidentally dab like that, it's totally fine. Just try to wipe it off while it's still wet because it's a lot easier to get wet edge paint off than it is when it's dried and hardened um, because then you run the risk of uh, accidentally scraping the leather when you're trying to get the dry edge paint off. And unfortunately, um, edge paint doesn't come off of linings so you just want to be careful that um, you're trying to avoid getting any on the lining um, but it's on the inside so if you do no one will probably ever see it so here here we're painting the top edge and the bottom edge from point to point of the side Um, these final two pieces, we're just going to be painting again, just the top and the bottom of the piece.
So once you've finished edge painting all of those sides, you want to set them aside to dry and then um, make sure that you close up your edge paint uh, because if you leave it open, uh, one, it could spill on you, which I've <laughs> done myself multiple times, but also it dries out really easily um, and it, you just, it'll make the paint a lot harder to work with. You can rehydrate it with a few drops of water, uh, but you can really only do that once before it will water down the paint too much. Um, so I would just recommend trying to keep it covered at all times when you're not painting. So next, we are going to work on creating the rolled handle. So you are going to be creating handles out of these two pieces for each of the handles. So in your kit, you are also going to find these two pieces of rope-like cord, and we use these in creating rolled handles um, to give them additional structure and firmness to the leather. And you'll see that I've um, already applied a piece of double stick tape, and that will just help um, them from moving around when you're sewing because we are gonna be sewing these inside the handles. So we'll take one of these and one of the handle straps, and you want to align this in the center of the piece and you want to make sure that the edges are inside the stitching lines at the very points just so that they're not showing and once you're happy with that you can take off the double stick tape Once you have this applied, then we're going to move on to the actual sewing. So you are going to be sewing together um, all of the stitch holes and they're punched evenly on both sides. So you'll be sewing the corresponding uh, holes and then the handle will end up looking like this with a seam line in the interior. So we are going to take our hand sewing needles and we are going to be doing a saddle stitch sewing technique, which is a very popular method of hand sewing in leather crafting. And that's the stitch we're going to do over the entire bag. So you will need two of the three needles. I included an extra one in the kit just in case one of them breaks. And we are first going to measure out the thread from the bundle of thread that I included in the kits. So we want it to be, we want the length of the thread to be a little over four times the length of the area that we're sewing. So you'll take your bundle of thread and you'll measure along. So that's a little more than one and then just measure four times the length of that. And then I like to add just a little bit extra just in case and I've given you plenty of thread, so don't worry about running out of thread. And then we are going to thread a needle onto each end. And just as a side note, if you want any more instruction on how to saddle stitch, the stitch we're going to be doing for all the hand sewing, I also offer a how-to video that is just on saddle stitching. So if you, if you want to see more after watching this tutorial, you can uh, check that out. So you have threaded a needle onto both ends of the thread, and now it just forms this long U-like shape. And we are going to start, um, it doesn't matter which end you start with on the handle. Um, you are just going to pick an end. So I'm, pick, I'm working with the left here and I'm gonna be moving left to right when sewing. And you want to match up the very first punch hole on both sides. So it's pretty easy to see the punch hole on lighter colored leathers, but if you're working with the black pebbled leather or another really dark leather um, and you're having trouble seeing the punch holes, you can fold the leather like this and it just makes them more apparent. So we're going to take, once you've found, once you've located the punch holes, I see the first one here and I see the first one here, we are going to take one of our threads 
it doesn't matter which one and we are going to sew through that very first punch hole on both sides. And so once you've sewn this needle through both sides, you want to take both of the needles and just pull them so that the thread length on both needles are even. And so now we have a needle coming out. Oops, lost a needle there. We have a needle coming out of each side. So working with the piece, folded like so, and again, I'm sewing from the left side to the right side, you're going to take the needle that is on the side of the leather facing you, and you are going to thread it through the second hole. And then you just wanna make sure that's nice and tight. Again, just making sure that the length of the threads are just about even. So now we are going, so you see we have half of a saddle stitch completed. And so we're going to flip over and we're going to, this is how we're going to complete our first full saddle stitch is that you are going to take the needle and thread that is coming out of this very first hole that we stitched through and you are just going to thread it through the second hole that the other needle just came out of. And just pull those, and by the way, this is like what a full saddle stitch looks like on the inside. And then just pull these nice and tight and you have your first full saddle stitch, which will look like that on both the front and the back. So once you've completed your first full saddle stitch, you're just gonna continue and do the exact same stitch all the way along the side of the handle. I would just recommend trying to keep a really even tension on the thread and tightening it as you go along so that there won't be any loose gaps or threads. If you have them handy in your house, I would also recommend having a pair of needle nose pliers on hand. Um, sometimes the leather can be a bit tricky to work with when sewing and this can just help you out a little bit. So once you've reached the final stitch on the handle, you're going to complete it just like you would the other saddle stitches. And then we are going to back stitch three times. There you have it, so sewn all the way to the top. And then back stitching is exactly the same process as a saddle stitch, it's just moving in the opposite direction. And this will help keep the thread secure and keep it from unraveling. So we're gonna take the top needle, just like we did to begin, thread it through the next hole. So 
is definitely where the pliers come in handy if you have them. Flip over to the back side, take the other needle and thread it through that same hole. And so there's your first full back stitch. And just repeat that two more times. Making sure that they're nice and tight. That's what your three back stitches are going to look like on both sides. You'll finish, again, we have a needle on both sides and we are going to cut the thread as close to the leather as possible, just so that there aren't any loose threads dangling. These scissors are great because they can get like really flush against the leather. And so there you have your first full stitched handle, uh, rolled handle, and we are going to um, eventually sew these onto the body of the bag like so. Um, first you want to do the exact same stitching process on the other handle. So once you've sewn together both of your handles, we are, you are going to apply a layer of edge paint to this entire sewn edge of both of the handles. You don't need to apply any paint to this section because it's going to be completely covered by the handle. And we're going to be using the exact same painting technique that we've used before on the single layers of leather. And once you have finished applying that first layer of edge paint to the sewn together handle, you're going to set that aside to dry and then uh, do the exact same round of painting on the other handle. So once all of your painted pieces have had a chance to fully dry, setting them aside to dry for at least 30 minutes, um, we are going to move on to the sanding process. So Sanding is important in particular for layers of leather that have been sewn together, such as the handle, because when you're working with multiple layers of sewn leather, you tend to see a lot more bumpiness and unevenness and air bubbles in the combined leather pieces. When working with single pieces of layers, uh, single layers of leather, such as the pieces that we uh, painted in our very first round of edge painting, it's not really required. Usually when you're working with a single layer of leather, it's, it's already a pretty smooth application. And I've also already pre-coated all of the pieces for you with a clear base coat, which should help you get a really nice, clean initial layer. So I'm going to demo the sanding process on the handle piece. So you're going to take your sandpaper block and I would start off the sanding process really gently. I would make sure to keep your sandpaper block flush against the painted edge. We don't want to accidentally sand down some of the face of the leather because it can uh, scratch and mar the exterior of the leather. And just start with a gentle sanding motion until you really get the hang of it and you feel more comfortable to apply some more pressure and speed it up a little bit. And it really doesn't need to be perfect. What I'm looking for in my first round of sanding is just 
so that I can get it noticeably smoother to the touch. You don't need to get rid of every imperfection. And also if you start to take off some of the initial layer of edge paint, as you can see that I've done, particularly here on some of the edges, that's totally not a big deal. We're going to go through multiple rounds of sanding and painting, particularly on the combined edges. So again, if, if you're not happy with it in the first round, you can do this at least two or three more times. So once you've finished sanding down the combined edge of the hand of both of the handles, and if you want to doing any sanding on the single layers of leather that we painted in the first step, you're going to go ahead and apply a second layer of edge paint. So we can repeat this process multiple times if needed. Typically I apply at least two coats of paint to all single layers of leather, even if I'm not doing any sanding. And generally, I don't like to apply more than three coats um, to a single layer of leather just because it can the paint can build up pretty quickly. When I'm working with double layers of leather such as this, I also like to apply a minimum of two coats. Uh, you can go up to four with layers of sanding in between each round of painting if you wish. Um, but I, so you can do a bit more with this. You can do an additional coat with this because it's a combined edge. You can apply a bit more paint, but I wouldn't go through more than four. So I am going to apply a second layer of paint to all of these, May perhaps do a bit of sanding if I want to on the combined layers, um, and then set them aside to dry before we move on to the next process, which is going to be sewing. So this is a step that is specific to the mini shopper bag. You will find in your kit these two small rectangular pieces as well as two rings. Because this piece is going to be threaded through like so, we are just going to paint this small area as a single strip, let it dry, then we will take off the double-sided tape, tape these pieces together, and then tape and then paint all of the combined edges. So I'm just using the initial stitch as kind of a guideline for where I'm going to begin and end. And I'm painting a little bit over it. Um, it doesn't matter if you paint too far because we are ultimately going to repaint the, um, the combined edges. and then set that aside to dry. So once the edge paint that you've painted on this portion of the small ring holder is dry, we are going to place the D-ring through the loop and take off the end of this double stick tape. And then you are going to match up the sides that will be sewn together and you are sealing in that loop, like so. And then we're going to finish the painting um, all the way around the combined sides. And then we will set this aside and let it dry. And once it's dry, we are going to sew it on like that. And that will be how our chain clips to the bag. just set that aside, let it dry for at least 15 or 20 minutes or so. We're not going to sand down this piece just because it's so small. 
So once the edge painting on the D-ring cover is dry, you are going to sew it down to the side of the bag and you're just going to, same as we've been doing previously, line up the stitches. It doesn't matter which end you start with, but I, you know, since there's so few stitches here, I would just recommend stitching all the way down and then back stitching all the way up. So it will look like this. So once all of your pieces have been sanded down and you've applied additional layers of edge paint and everything has dried, we are going to move on to sewing the handle and the handle covers and everything to the body of the bag. So there is, this is one of the areas where there is a slight difference between the Lex mini shopper bag, which I'm working on in this tutorial, and the full size shopper bag. So for the mini bag, you are going to be sewing these handles directly onto the body of the bag, and then you will be sewing the handle covers on top, and those will be sewn down onto the body of the bag. And this differs from the regular size shopper bag. Um, on the regular size shopper bag, you'll see that there's the additional stitching detail on the outside. So on the regular size shopping bag, you are first going to sew the handles onto the cover. That's why there's that stitching line there. And then you're going to sew the handle cover onto the body of the bag. The reason I did it that way is I just thought it looked, since this is a smaller piece, it just looked a little bit cleaner to only have the single stitching line from the handle cover as opposed to two stitching lines, just because it's a small piece. Okay, so first we are going to begin, like always, measuring out our thread. So you will be cutting this from the bundle that comes in your kit to be a bit more than four times the length. So that's a bit more than one. And just measure out four times. Add a little bit extra. So to make it a little bit easier, I've included some double stick tape on the handle pieces um, so that they don't move around too much while you're sewing them to the body of the bag. I would just recommend taping down one at a time, depending on the order that you're sewing them in. It doesn't matter if you start on the right or the left. So you just wanna make sure that the corresponding punch holes are lined up and then you can just tape it down bag like so and so it doesn't really matter where you begin your stitch which edge you choose I would just recommend doing it in the same place on the other side so I am going to begin all of my stitches on the outermost thread line both here and here and then I'll, when I move to this side I'll begin it here and here that way, all of the back stitches will be consistently even on these inner lines. Again, just a matter of personal preference, but if there's another way you'd like to do it, um, or if you forget to line them up, it totally doesn't matter. So you're going to stitch through the first hole on the handle, threading through the first hole on the body of the bag, and then just pull that through making sure that your threads are staying even. And then with the front of the bag facing forward towards you, you're going to take the needle that's on top and then just thread that through the next hole. And the corresponding hole in the body of the bag, flipping over. are going to make 
make sure these are about even. And then you're going to take, to finish your first full saddle stitch, you'll take the threaded needle that is coming out of our very first hole and we are going to loop that through the second hole that we just sewed through. That will make your first full saddle stitch. So it'll look like that and that. And then you're just going to continue this stitch all the way around. Um, on this piece in particular, I would try to be really um, consistent with checking that the thread is staying tight, just since this one is a little bit bulkier and we're sewing something down like this. I find that the threads can fight with you a little bit and you just wanna make sure that everything is nice and tight and will be, when everything is sewn down, it'll be flush. Um, the two pieces of leather will be sewn together really tightly. So once you've sewn down the handle onto the body of the bag, you are going to place the handle covers over this and match up the stitching holes and then sew these to the body of the bag. Again, I would recommend that for both the full size shopper and the mini shopper that you try to mirror the stitches on both ends. It doesn't really matter, of course, um, where you did the stitches for the mini shopper bag since this is ultimately going to be covered. But for the full size shopper bag, I tried to end them on the same place in each side. So I am going to start my stitch in the upper outer corners and move my way in so that the back stitches will be on the interior corners. And I've also included a piece, I will also include a piece of double stick tape on these so you can place them and they will stick so it'll just make it easier for when you're sewing around. So after you've sewn the handle covers onto the tops of the handles, the next step is sewing together the very bottom of the bag. So we are going to sew this with the pieces overlapping. It doesn't matter which um, piece overlaps which since they're identical, but um, I generally just like to look and see which um, layer of edge paint looks better. And I put that one on top since it will be facing out on the bottom of the bag once the bag is completed. So you can just pick that and you want to line up all of the corresponding stitching holes. Measuring out a little over four times the length of the thread. So it also doesn't matter which end you begin your stitch on. Um, you're just going to pick one of the ends and sew all, all the way along the stitching line and then finish with three back stitches.
once you finish sewing the bottom of the bags pieces together, we are going to move on to the final phase of sewing and the and complete the handbag by sewing the side pieces to the body of the bag. So I think the easiest way to do this is to take the side pieces and first um, sew the them overlapping to the bottom of the bag where there's this um, half circle feature. And then once that is sewn down, I think it's I think it just makes it a lot easier then and you can sew the two other sides together. So first you want to match up the stitching holes which have been punched so that there will be the same number on the body of the bag as on the side piece. And then we're going to measure our thread. So it doesn't really matter which side you start the stitch on. I am going to start my stitch on what I'm calling the front of the bag, which is basically just the piece of the bag that I overlapped on top when sewing um, the bottom of the bag together. And that way the back stitches will be located on the back of the bag. Again, I think this is a pretty minor detail, so it, it really doesn't matter. Um, which side you start on and then um, I'm also just going to mirror the reverse so when I'm working on the other side I'll start on the front of the bag and end with back stitches on the body of the bag. <clears throat> so the sewing process is going to be exactly the same here. Once you've located the first stitch which should be right around the point edge, I'll just guide that through. the needle that's on the top threading it through the next open hole just making sure that our threads are nice and even and then we're going to flip over Take the needle coming out of the very first hole. And thread that through just to make sure, just to thread that through. And that is your first saddle stitch. You're just gonna complete that same stitch all the way around. And once you reach the final hole on this side, you will just back stitch three times like we've been doing, and then we're going to move on to sewing the sides of the bag. So the last round of sewing that we're going to do is once you've sewn down the semicircles onto the body of the bag is going to be sewing together all four sides of the body of the bag. So I would recommend, it doesn't matter which side of the bag you start with, I would recommend starting your stitch down here and working your way up, um, but it doesn't matter which direction you start in. So once you've measured out your thread, you're going to, and you've matched together 
all of the corresponding sewing holes and we're sewing this piece together with the interior lining facing together. So you're going to begin your stitch at the very bottom and this one can be a little tricky to get started just because you're dealing with these overlapping layers of leather. But you're going to start your stitch just as we always do. Making sure our thread is even. Here as well, I would just mention that it's really important to, to keep checking the tension of your thread and just making sure that all of the stitches are pretty tight so that you won't have any gaps in the side of the bag. So that's our first full saddle stitch and you're just going to continue up the side of the bag. Um, if you have them available, one thing that can be helpful when sewing together a side like this is to take binder clips and just place them up higher and that will just help you know, help the piece to just be a little bit more manageable and it won't be moving around so much on you. So once you've sewn up to the top of the side, you are going to back stitch three times and then we are just going to repeat this process on the other, on the other sides of the bag. So that's what the finished edge will look like. And you're just going to keep sewing around all four corners of the bag and keep the bag itchy. So after sewing together all four edges of the shopper bag, we're going to move on to our final step, which is edge painting and sanding down the four sewn edges. So after you've applied an initial layer of edge paint to each of the four sides and let it dry for at least 30 minutes, I would recommend doing at least one round of sanding uh, because this is a combined edge that's where we see a lot of unevenness and air bubbles and i think the sanding can be really helpful in this process and you can repeat this process <clears throat> multiple times if you wish i would recommend doing a minimum of two coats to each of the edges and no more than four with rounds of sanding in between if you wish and once that's finished your bag will be complete Thanks so much for watching this tutorial on my DIY shopper kit. I'd love to see what you've created. So if you'd like to share, you can find me on Instagram at Aurora Lee Designs. Also, I'm always working on new designs. So if there's a style that you'd like to see featured in one of my kits or patterns, just let me know below in the comments.